Straight ahead on this week's Falcon Fever. The men's basketball team has made history, but the season's over. We have the recap next. And the baseball team evens out their record to 500. Find out how their spring break went. And the tennis team took on some top competition on the courts over the break. See how they fared coming up next on Falcon Fever. Hey there and welcome to another episode of Falcon Fever. I'm Casey Beasley. And I'm RJ Sievertsgaard. The university is all abuzz after the job the men's basketball team did in the NCAA tournament up in Kentucky. And with Coach Young and the university appearing in just their third Elite Eight, they were looking to make some history this year and they would have to start things off against Metro State out of Denver, Colorado. Ryan May jump-started the Falcons from the tip by scoring eight of UM's 12 points in the first four minutes. May had 10 points on the day. At the 15-minute mark of the first half, Metro State went on a run and gained as much as a nine-point lead that would be cut to one by the halftime. In the second half, the Falcons continued to trail until there was literally only one minute and 12 seconds left when senior Antoine Davis got the and one layup and went to the line and made his free throw to put the Falcons up. The teams would then exchange baskets for the next minute to eventually tie the game up with only 10 seconds to play and Falcons with the ball. Who takes the last shot, you wonder? Duh, who else? Mr. DC, of course. Davis drives to the basket, gets fouled, goes to the line, makes his free throws, and gives the Falcons the 67-65 victory in great fashion once again. Davis finished with 18 points, 11 rebounds, and 7 assists. DJ Rivera was right behind Antoine with 14 points and 7 rebounds himself. After the game, Coach Young and Antoine spoke on how the team stayed together. Heck of a ball game. I mean, it was a physical ball game. I don't think, I haven't seen the stats, but I don't think either team shot very well. You know, that's just, it's tournament time basketball, I think. They uh, still was a struggle, though, because we couldn't get over that hump. We didn't get it to one point, two point, and then come down and hit three. So that hit, that hurt you a little bit, but we stuck as a team as a family, just played hard and finished the game together. After the historic win for the Falcons, they were set to play Bellarmine in the Final Four. The Falcons held the Knights from scoring for more than seven minutes during the second half. The Falcons shot 50% from the free throw point range and out-rebounded the Knights 43-28. to And everyone knew that this was going to be an exciting game when DJ Rivera started off the game with three-pointer during the Falcons' first possession of the game. Jonas Brown sealed the win for the Falcons with two free throws at the end of the game to send them to the national championship. In UM's 79-72 upset, DJ Rivera led the team with 23 points and 9 rebounds. He was followed by Drico Hightower, who had 13 points. He shot the ball very well, hitting 5 of 10 from the field. Antoine Davis had another solid night. He nearly had a double-double, scoring 12 points and grabbing 9 rebounds. He also dished out 6 assists. Here's Coach Young on the team's performance. That was a really a, a heck of a basketball game, I thought. They came out and, and started in some things that, that uh, we had talked about uh, and not really went over too much because I didn't think that was going to happen. So we changed some things. We got to call timeout and, and we changed the way we run our offense and the guys ran it to perfection. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, next was the national championship and what an exciting day it was for the team and the fans. Four buses made the eight hour drive to help the team take on the Western Washington Vikings on the 24th. The teams went back and forth the entire first half and Western Washington had a four point lead at the break. The second half was a nail biter folks. The Falcons took the lead at the 1637 mark off a of Davis layup. Or unfortunately for the Falcons, Western Washington was on fire, shooting 54% from the field and 47% from behind the three-point line, and they just continued to drain threes late in the game to give them enough to de defeat the Falcons 72-65. Despite the loss, UM got great performances out of DJ Vera and Antoine Davis once again. Rivera scored 20 points while Davis dropped 16 on 6 of 9 shooting. Drico Hightower definitely had an off night. He scored 9 points but was cold from the field shooting just 3 of 13. He also grabbed 9 rebounds. Well, 
What a terrific run it was for the it was for the guys. Casey, what do you say we recap the season for these folks and let you know how the basketball team did in 2000 and 2012, 2011 and 2012. Head coach Danny Young and the Falcons finished with 29 wins and just eight losses on the year while going 12 and five in the Peach Belt Conference. DJ Rivera and Antoine Davis were your score, scoring leaders this season. Big surprise. Davis led the team last season, but Rivera took the reins this year. He averaged almost 22 points a game, while Davis averaged 14 a game as well. Three Falcons tied for the rebounding lead this year. Davis, Demarcus Catchings, and Marvin Fitzgerald all averaged almost six rebounds a game. These guys helped UM to a number four national ranking in, rebound, in the rebound margin per game. DJ was named the NCAA Tournament MVP and was named a third-team All-American. Antoine Davis was named Peach Belt Conference Defensive Player of the Year. A significant class of seniors is leaving the University of Montevallo after this season. Washington, D.C. native Antoine Davis led the team in assists both years here at UM. This season, he did, not, he did it despite missing 15 games due to an injury. DeMarcus Catchings, a vital player from the bench, departs having led the team in rebounding in the last two years. It was a pretty good only UM season for D.J. Rivera. Along with his terrific postseason, his 755 points this year was also a Montebello record for single season point leader. Javon Jackson also departs from UM. He played in 28 games in 2011-2012 season. His best game in a Falcon uniform came last year, scoring 17 points against USC Aiken. In the last senior is Chattanooga, Tennessee native Chauncey Thompson. He's also known by another name around campus or on the court, I.O., because of his ability to score. He shot a blistering 58% from the field in his career at UM. The 29 games won, this, won by this group of seniors this season tied for the most wins in program history, and his, its historical run to the national championship was the furthest any UM team has made it in the NCAA tournament. Switching gears a bit, we take it to the, the baseball field as the guys continue to battle in the Peach Belt Conference, Casey. Yeah, head coach Chandler Rose has got some serious power in those bats over there, and now they sit at a 500 record on the year. The baseball team faced Stillman at home on the 21st, and after a long second inning, they couldn't seem to get back in the game. Ewan wound up losing the game 8-3. to Will Fulmer went 1-3 for three while batting in 3. Heath Peterson also went one for three. He batted in one. Hunter Stevens picked up the loss. This is his first on the year. The Falcons then hosted conference opponent Georgia College and State in a three-game series. First was a doubleheader matchup on the 24th. The Falcons took game one, two to one. The runs came from a pair of solo jack home runs from Zach Willoughby and Josh Headley. Junior Michael Shreves pitched a monster game going 6.2 innings with 10 strikeouts and just one earned run. Unfortunately, the Falcons wouldn't fare so well in game two, falling 13 to 10 to State College. Heath Peterson led the way for the Falcons going three for three at the plate with two dingers that collected him five RBIs. He also walked twice. Then the Falcons capped off the series on the 25th for game three. This game was much like the high-scoring affair of the last game with the Falcons falling 17-15, but not without a valiant effort at the plate. Alex Stiver led the way going 4-for-6 with three RBIs, followed closely by Heath Peterson, who was 2-for-5 on the day with a double and three runs batted in. And Austin Deberly also went 2-for-5 at the dish and drove in three. With the loss, the Falcons dropped to 16-16 and -16 on the year while going 10-8 and -8 in conference. Well, over the break, the tennis team played a very special match against Coker for tennis against breast cancer. The Falcons fell, unfortunately, 7-2 against Coker, with the only victories coming from the number three and four spots held down by Lauren Blair and Megan Stevens. Blair won her match 7-5, 7-5, while Stevens prevailed 6-3, 6-1. The rest of the Falcons' spring break tennis session was the toughest of the season. The team faced off against some top teams in the nation. The Falcons fell 9-0 to all of their opponents, including nationally ranked number 25 Francis Marion, number 1 BYU Hawaii, and number 9 Clayton State. The men's golf team is busy on the links. March 13th, they took part 
in the Lander Bearcat Invitational over in Greenwood, South Carolina. Out of 17 teams, the guys finished in 13th place. Austin, Austin Murphy shot a plus six over three rounds, good for a tie for 22nd place. Andrew Lowry and Andres Morales both tied for 42nd. They shot plus 13 for the Falcons. Well, now that basketball is over, there's not a lot of sports in right now, but we're going to recap them for you. That's exactly right, Casey, and we'll start with baseball. The baseball team has a three-game series with conference foe Columbus State coming up. The two face off March 30th at 4 p.m., and then a doubleheader is scheduled for the 31st. The first pitch for those two games is set for noon and 3 p.m. The next three matches for the tennis team are all conference matches. UM has road matches with North Georgia and Columbus State, and a home match versus Georgia Southwestern on the slate. As we transition to April, the Falcons also travel out of conference to West Alabama as well. Coach Mark McGuigan and the girls are still seeking their first win in the Peach Belt Conference. And finally, the golf team travels to Pensacola, Florida on April 3rd to take part in the Agronaut Invitational. As always, if you want more Falcon Fever, you can interact with us online. You can watch current and past Falcon Fever episodes on our YouTube channel. Just search Montevello for you. If, if you haven't or already are out of the loop, you can become our friend on Facebook where you can leave a comment, talk about recent games, or give a shout out to your favorite player. We had a lot of action over on our page the past week. And last but not least, you can also follow us on Twitter. Just search for UM Falcon Fever. Many of our Facebook posts also go straight to our Twitter page, so if you follow one more than the other, don't worry, you're still connected, no worries. And for extended sports coverage, team rosters, and all other Falcon sports, go to montevellafalcons.com. There you can find many pictures of the men's historic basketball run through the National Championship Tournament. Speaking of social media, if you want to, we want to send a special thank you to everyone who followed us on Falcon Fever during the Elite Eight in Kentucky. Some of our posts had over 30 likes, and many of you posted to our wall or shared or retweeted us. So thank you for that. That's exactly right, Casey. I mean, there's just too many people to name to, to thank for the trip and everything that hap happened up there. Lex Murdoch, our great cameraman, producer Daniel Vest, and myself, we all had a, had a great experience up there in Kentucky, and we're glad we could share it with the team and all of you. It was a great week overall. Posted Falcon Fever from Cincinnati, Casey. That was awesome, beautiful backdrop, just amazing, awesome experience. Antoine Davis made the top 10 plays on ESPN. Your boy Lex Murdoch and me, underneath the basket, got a little national shout out, so it was great overall. It was just a great, great week. So thank you everyone for following along. So, but Casey, that's all we got this week for him. So for Casey Beasley, I'm RJ Sievertsgard, and we're out of here. <laughs>